Hi, and welcome to Better Code Today. My name's Tim Neal, and today I'm going to be talking about mocks, stubs, and fakes. So, mocks, stubs, and fakes are all used in unit testing. There isn't time in this video to discuss unit testing itself in any sort of detail, but suffice to say it's a great idea, and if you can be doing it, you should. All three are very similar in that they provide ways to replace a given class's dependencies so that the class can be tested in isolation. This allows simpler, better targeted and more robust unit tests to be written. Where they differ is in the functionality they provide to your test class. A fake is a simplified implementation of a dependency. Typically, you would write it manually without the help of a framework, probably implementing the dependency interface, but only writing the bare minimum amount of code needed to make your tests pass. You may find that entire properties and methods don't need to have an implementation, or if they do, they may just return a fixed value. Although the advantage of fakes is that if you do need more complex code to keep the test happy, it's relatively easy to do this. Fakes can be especially useful when your class expects the dependency to process some data in a specific way, or at least store data for later retrieval, such as in a cache or repository. The disadvantage of fakes is that they don't tend to provide a mechanism for verifying how the dependency is used. So if it's important to test that the class interacts with the dependency in a specific way, you would probably be better considering a mock. A stub provides a way for injecting data into the class under test. You would usually use a framework to create your stub and then in your test method explicitly define the data that should be returned when the class accesses the property or method on the dependency. Stubs really come into their own when your class needs to be able to obtain data from a dependency, but the actual data obtained either doesn't matter or can be easily defined in advance before the class is invoked. Like fakes, stubs don't provide a mechanism for verifying how the class interacts with them. You would use them when it's more important that the class obtains the data than how it obtains it. Most mocking frameworks also allow you to create stubs. Depending on the framework, there may or may not be differences in the process required to create a stub versus a mock. Where a framework treats a stub and a mock essentially the same, this can be quite useful because then you can choose which methods or properties on your object should be stubbed and which one should be mocked, providing extra flexibility in your test. A mock is the one you'll want to use when the way the class interacts with the dependency is important to the test. Mocks are usually created using a framework and, as I mentioned earlier, it will almost certainly be the same framework you use to create your stubs. In actual fact, most mocking frameworks are so fully featured they can add quite complex logic and in fact provide the same functionality as a fake as well, although depending on what you're trying to achieve, a fake may still make your test code simpler and more readable. A mock is the only one of the three that can directly cause your test to fail, as you can add assertions that specific methods or properties have been called, as well as checks on any data that may have been passed to them. So let's have a look at how we can use mocks, stubs and fakes in our own unit tests. You'll see here I have an Espresso Maker class. It has three dependencies, the bean grinder, the water boiler and the porter filter. Uh, for those that are wondering, the porter filter is the thing you put the ground coffee in and then push water through to make the espresso. Um, I actually had to look that one up myself, but I'm assured that is the correct term. And we have a make coffee method here, and that's the one we're going to write a test for. It's a relatively simple method. It's only got, what, six lines of code. And what we're doing here, you can see we grind some beans. We load the grinds into the port filter. We tamp the grinds and then create a cup and call this a boil method on the water boiler. And that has a callback so that when that's happened, we call this on water boiled method which pushes the water into the port filter and receives the coffee into the cup. And then we wait for that to complete and then we return the cup. So nothing too complex going on there. And let's have a look at how we might write a unit test using mock stubs and fakes. So here's our empty test. I'm simply going to test that the espresso maker makes espresso. Seems a fairly straightforward and obvious thing for it to do. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create our espresso maker. And 
And to do that, we're going to need to pass in our three dependencies, the bean grinder, the water boiler, and the porter filter. So let's just leave that there for a minute while we have another quick look at the code being tested. So taking the first dependency, the bean grinder, we can see we only use it once. And all we do is call the grind method and expect it to return us some ground beans. So we're not going to pass any data to it. And so long as we get some ground beans back, we don't really care how we obtain them. And that makes this dependency quite a good candidate for a stub. So let's have a look how we would write that. I'm going to use the mock framework to create our mocks and stubs today. That's mock spelt M-O-Q. It's sometimes pronounced mock you, but that sounds weird to me, so I'm just going to call it mock. The mock framework doesn't distinguish between mocks and stubs at creation, so to create a stub, what we need to do is create an instance of the mock class, like so. And what we're going to do is pass it the type of stub we're going to create. So this is going to be IB bean grinder. And there we have our stub. And what we need to do next is to set up the grind method stub. And we do that by calling the setup method and passing it a lambda expression to describe the method we want it to call. And next we tell it what it should return and we're going to return a concrete beans class and pass true on the constructor to get some ground beans. We don't have to use a concrete class here. We could quite easily use a stub or a mock or a fake for the beans as well if we wanted to. But in this case, the beans class is so simple. I'm quite happy using a concrete one. What we can then do is pass the grinder stub into the espresso maker and we in fact pass the object property here which actually contains the stub implementation of the bean grinder. Okay so back to the code the next dependency is the water boiler. Again we only call one thing on the water boiler the boil method itself but this time we're going to pass it a callback that should be called when the water has boiled. We could write a stubble mock to do this, but it's going to be a little more complex and might make the test code a little harder to read. So instead of that, I've created a fake water boiler to replace the dependency. And here it is. You'll see it's a very simple implementation of iBoiler. All it does is return a running task that calls the water boiled action with some mocked water that has the temperature property set up to return 95. Sorry for any American viewers, but my code is going to be working in Celsius, so 95 degrees seems a reasonable temperature for water that's just off the boil. So now we can create an instance of our boiler fake. like so, and pass it into the espresso maker. There's no need to do any setup this time because all the setup is actually done in the fake water boiler itself. And you can see this means we can kind of hide away the implementation of the fake from the code. Actually, how it does it really isn't important how the espresso maker makes espresso, provided that it does it. Back to the code one more time and we'll see the final dependency, the porter filter, is very much the main actor for what we're trying to do here. We load the ground beans into the porter filter, we tamp it, and then once we've got some boiled water, we push it into the porter filter and receive the coffee into the cup. So because it's quite important that we're going to tamp the porter filter, it's important that we put grind beans in it and it's important we put water in it. So this sounds more like a mock. That will let us ensure that the code under test is actually calling the methods we want it to. So as I said earlier, creating a mock looks exactly the same as creating a fake. So let's do that now. Again, we just create an instance of the generic mock class, passing it in the interface or 
base class we want to mock. But this time, instead of setting up any stubs, we're going to wait until the code has been called, and then we're going to verify that certain actions have been performed. So we do this using the verify method. So first we're going to verify that the load method got called and that it got passed some ground beans. So to do that, we're going to use a Lambda expression to describe the method we want to call. Because the load method requires a parameter, we have to specify that in here. If we had a object that was identical to the object we expect to be passed, we could pass that in here. But generally, it's better to use the it is syntax, and we can pass that the type of parameter we expect. We expect it to be some beans. And then what we can do is use another link expression to describe a condition that the beans must satisfy. So here it's simply the beans must be ground. And that's our first expectation. What we can do next is verify that the port filter is tamped. This is even simpler because there's nothing to pass. So all we have to do is have the Lambda expression describing the tamp method. And next we're going to want to verify that the hot water gets passed into the port filter. Again, we can use the it is syntax to describe the condition that the water must satisfy and perhaps saying it must be 95 degrees is a bit uh, too restrictive so let's just say it must be above 90 degrees i really don't know if that's good for espresso or not but let's assume it is and the last thing we're going to do is to verify that the cup is passed into the receive method we don't really care what the cup is. It can be anything that implements the iCup interface. So what we can do here is use the is any syntax. And that will just say that any cup will satisfy this requirement. It's possibly worth mentioning that you can also set a message to be displayed when the condition fails. And in general, it will be a very good idea to do that. It certainly helps you be able to understand why a test has failed very quickly, and then you can start investigating what the problem is. So what we should be able to do now is pass in the port filter mock. Again, we use the object property and actually call the espresso maker like so. If we had any conditions we needed the resultant cup to satisfy, we could add normal asserts in here. Um, I don't in this situation. And then if we run the test, hopefully we will see that everything is working correctly. And it is. There we go. The espresso maker makes espresso. Fantastic. Just to prove that nothing underhand is happening and that this is actually doing something useful, I will just briefly set the beans to not be ground. And as you can see, that should mean that this line fails. So let's see what happens now. And you can see that this time the test has failed. And if we just expand that out a bit better, you can see that there's quite a good message explaining that the load with beans, beans as brand has failed, but there have been invocations on load tamp push and receive so from this we can see well something called load but it didn't satisfy the condition the mocking framework isn't quite clever enough to say well beans should have been ground and they weren't but this is something you can probably figure out relatively easily from the information provided and that's a very simple introduction to using mocks stubs and fakes in a unit test and that's all i have for you this time Hopefully you now understand the role of mocks, stubs and fakes in unit testing and their relative advantages and disadvantages. You also saw how to write a fake and how to use the mock framework to create stubs and mocks. If you enjoyed this video, please take the time to subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Twitter. Or if you have any thoughts or questions or ideas for anything you'd like to see in a future video, please let us know. Thanks for watching.